Hello, what we're looking at here is another Arduino project. Our main focus here is going to be using serial shift registers. This is part of a larger series that I'm planning, starting with Arduino, and using pretty much the same circuits with Raspberry Pi and microchip PIC and so forth. But we're going to concentrate on Arduino. As you see, I have eight LEDs. They're counting in binary, if you can see that. Hidden behind here is a 74HC595. This is an older style Arduino with an ATmega328. This is an RS232 adapter board that connects to the older Arduino board. Understanding serial shift registers is important because a lot of your peripheral devices that connect to microcontrollers use variations of serial protocols. Where I'm going to differ is, yes, they have a um, command in the Arduino library to address these type of serial chips. But what have you learned? Okay, you use their command. Big deal, it works. Um, I tried it. It doesn't work any better than my code does. But the difference is, I know what my code does do, so I can port it over to something else, such as a Raspberry Pi. The same code with minor modifications works in Python, it works in PIC-C, and could even work in assembly in a way. The thought process is the same, and the goal here is to teach the student how to think and analyze the problem not just follow a manual, put in this command, and hey, the LED blinks. So let's look a little closer at the code and find out what's really going on here. All right, here is the internal wiring diagram and pinout for a 74HC595. It consists of an 8-bit shift register and an 8-bit latch. Here is the connections as it would be to LEDs. We have eight LEDs connected up in a common cathode configuration and eight 270 ohm resistors. And here is the data pin, which uh, they call it A, I call it data. Here is your latch pin, here is your clock. Back here, we've defined the data pin as being on Arduino's digital pin 10, the latch pin as being on digital pin 11, and the clock, the serial clock, being digital pin 12. I'll skip the setup part of the software. Note these two small subroutines. One is called pulse clock. It will just simply go from low to high to low when you call it and pulse CS is your la is for your latch again like before it will go from low to high back to low here is our loop routine wow looks real simple doesn't it and it will if you learn to make small debugged subroutines you shouldn't have a lot down in loop but what we do have is a basic for loop that will count up to 255. And you have a routine called byte out. And I'm going to send the value of i, which is my index counter, to the subroutine. That will shift the 8 bits into the serial shift register in the 595. Then I'm going to activate the pulse CS to latch the data on the output delay 200 milliseconds and loop again for and it'll do this for 255 times which is the count you saw in the video on the LEDs. Here is your basic serial out routine and I use this in a number of different configurations. It'll work with the 74595. It works with the 74160s that I've used and it will work with the max 7219 um, display ch chips. Nonetheless I'm going to send a 
8-bit value which is going to be byte j. I use a byte variable because it only uses one byte as opposed to two bytes with an integer. Same thing with my second variable k. I use another for loop that's going to go through eight iterations 0 to 7. I'm going to make, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take j that was sent to here, that's the count sent from loop and I'm going to bitwise and that value and store it in K. What this does it's going to produce either a 0 or a 1 depending on the value of the least significant bit. Then I'm just going to simply write it to the uh, data pin the value for K. It's going to be 1 or 0 then I'm going to pulse the serial shift clock and into the 74 or 595 it goes. Then I'm going to take the value in J and shift one bit right. And I'm going to do this eight times sending it in. Um, I'll have eight clock pulses and eight um, shifts, actually seven because it will break, it won't shift it going the last time. Well yeah it will but it doesn't make any difference at that point and then it ex then it exits and this is for the common cathode setup that you saw earlier if I want to use a common anode setup that is I flip the LEDs around and tied them all off to uh, plus five instead of ground works the same way except I have inverted the value of K and that is when I have a 1 it's going to put out a 0 and if I have a 0 it's going to put out to be a 1. Because I wired the LEDs under common anode electrically opposite I would have had to invert the data bit to get them to work right. And that's it. That's the whole program and you can, all, you can use one of these either this one or this one depending on which one you had. So all you had was about three simple subroutines plus loop. We will be seeing how to use this more with the Raspberry Pi and other devices as we look into more and more into serial shift circuits. Thanks for listening.